Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming, and today we are diving into the world of unlicensed NES games. And today we're playing Operation Secret Storm by Color Dreams, which was a company that produced unlicensed NES games, as I just said. Um, eventually, uh, Nintendo started cracking down on unlicensed games, actually. And fun story, Color Dreams here eventually turned into Wisdom Tree and started producing Christian-themed NES games. Sort of the, you know, if you thought educational games were bad, how about religious video games, you know? Like the kind of thing Rod and Todd would play in The Simpsons. Uh, but they took a lot of their old games, like this, and they basically just reskinned it and made it religious. And the reason they went religious is not because they actually cared about religion, it's because, uh, you know, Nintendo was cracking down on them selling unlicensed games, putting pressure on game stores not to carry their games. So they said, well, we'll make religious games and we'll sell them to religious bookstores. And Nintendo certainly wouldn't dare threaten a religious bookstore. And they didn't. So they got away with it. So anyway, crazy little backstory for this game, which also clearly seems to have racist undertones, as we can tell from the title there. But I'm looking forward to playing this rather random, crazy. Oh, we're in Kuwait and Iraq. Lovely. What kid in the 80s and 90s didn't want to play a game where you were in Kuwait? Okay, so I, I'm the guy on the left. I've come here to beat up people. I assume terrorists or something. Um, now, being an unlicensed game, this thing controls like ass. <laughs> what? There's like a naked guy on a, 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 a pole over here with like sticks or something. This is crazy. All right, there he goes. All right, we're off to a good start. It's very slippery. Uh, but actually, so far, it's it's playable. It's It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Usually, like, we've played some games that are even considered not, like, horrendous, but, uh, um, still have bad controls, you know, like, this game is supposed to be notorious for being, like, a terrible NES game, but, like, frankly, I mean, so far, I'm not, it doesn't seem too terrible, it seems kind of easy so far, so, we'll keep going. Um, did any of you guys out there own this game, though? That's one question I had, because, and if you did, how did you get it? I, I got to imagine, again, being an unlicensed game, like, I don't even know how you would have heard of this. They would never cover it in Nintendo Power or anything like that. So, like, my my guess, if anyone actually did own it, is it's like somebody's aunt bought it for them for Christmas or something. Like, they never asked for it. And, like, you know, they got it from a relative who didn't understand what video games were. Um, and then you got this, like, sort of crappy knockoff beat-em-up game. Beating up naked dudes and dudes in, uh, I don't even know what you call them. Not burkas. Are they called burkas? I don't know. Now I'm beating up literally a, an eagle. Okay. Can this thing even hurt me? What's it doing when it stomps the ground? I don't, I don't 100% get what's happening here. Get over here, bird. Come face me. Like a man. There we go. I think we punched it. Get him! Wow, the music even like really sucks in this. <laughs> oh man, I sometimes feel like watch like uh, playing bad video games is like watching uh, bad movies. You know, where, like, sometimes the, there is joy in watching something that's, like, so bad. Like, it's so bad, it's good, right? Like, the old the old uh, saying, it's so bad, it's good. Um, like, a really bad video game can actually be kind of interesting. Okay, now what happens? I killed the bird. Is that it? <laughs> Wait. Did anything happen now? Did we just beat the whole game? I have been I haven't been playing this for five minutes. Okay, I can pause. Okay, seriously, is that wait, what? I wonder if there's game genie codes for this. I have to suspect this was when game wouldn't even register on Game Genie's radar. They wouldn't even have bothered to make codes. Oh my god, the game is okay. Well you can't have a a, a shitty unlicensed game. Without uh, game-breaking bugs. Look at this crap! Okay, I guess we reset the game now. We try again. 
Color dreams. Programming. They spelt programming wrong. It says pro gaming by John Valish. Let me tell you, if you program this game, you should not put your ga your name on it because that is just, you know, you're giving people license to. Oh, press select to throw a bomb. Um, you're just giving people license to harass you. If you put your name on a game, make sure it's a damn good game, you know. Don't put it on a crappy game. Um, oh, this seems to be a grenade. Oh, I didn't even know I had grenades. Okay, let's beat up this guy. This guy doesn't even seem like he's- Oh, God, somebody- Wait, I just shot. Wait, I just shot again. Hold on, you have bullets in this? Wait. You have bullets? I had no idea. Okay, apparently you have bullets. But I think I might have run out. I don't- I don't understand how this works. I guess if you're really close, you just punch people. And then if you're farther away, you'll actually shoot. Die. Oh, I shot him, Indiana Jones style. Um, I saw a movie recently, um, Harder They Fall on Netflix. Uh, Idra Elbis, Jonathan Major, sort of like a spaghetti western, um, with an all-black cast. Actually a very good movie, it had a really interesting twist, which... I almost sort of rank up there, uh, with... Well, I don't want to say what movie it, it reminds me of, in case any of you guys check out the movie, I don't want to spoil it for you. But Harder They Fall, if you like spaghetti westerns and stuff, and a very Tarantino kind of feel. Uh, pretty good movie, I thought. Um, but there's a big final showdown where a bunch of good guys and a bunch of bad guys are all fighting in a town. And it does go on rather long, actually. Um, but that's not the thing that bothered me. The thing, I, I wouldn't even say bothered, but the thing I found amusing during the battle is every single time a good guy has a bad guy dead to rights, they would do that sort of Wild West thing where they they would like, you know, stare at the guy and, and, and rather than pulling the trigger and killing him, they would like put their gun in their holster and they'd be like, draw. You know, like they want to get like a really satisfying kill. And I get like maybe one or two characters doing that to like one or two bad guys, but it was literally like, you know, let's throw a grenade. Oh, I don't have any. It was literally like every single time. It was like five times, six times in the final showdown. They kept challenging bad guys and good guys to draw us. And I'm like, just shoot each other. God damn it. Stop, uh, stop trying to like overcomplicate things and just kill each other. It kind of felt like a reverse Indiana Jones thing. Like when Indiana Jones was faced with a swordsman, the guy pulled out his sword and did all those crazy moves, wanted to fight him honorably. Indy just pulled his gun and shot him. These cowboys were doing the opposite. They had the gun pointed at the guy and then they put it away so that they could fight hand to hand or have a draw. Uh, where they could potentially risk losing and dying. So, yeah, anyway. Um, okay, I'm out of bullets, by the way. The the shooting the enemies is what put me on that whole diatribe about uh, Heart of They Fall and Indiana Jones. How do you pass this first level? Oh, if you hold down and uh, attack, you do, like, a drop kick. Maybe you have to do something with this bird. Hold on, let's see here. Just sort of whip, pistol whipping the bird. That does nothing. That does nothing. And the duck on the bird. Are you serious? How do how do you pass the first level here? Okay, hold on. I I want to. I really want to look this up. Is the game so bad that there's only one level programmed for it? Um, I don't even remember what this game is called. Operation. Uh, crap. Okay, hold on. Bad NES games, Operation... Operation Secret Storm. Okay, Operation Secret Storm. Hold B to run an attack. That doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, wait, what? If you hold B, you run. Oh, and you can do, like, a somersault in the air. Wow, there's, like, actually, like, complicated moves in this. And the music just cuts out randomly if you stop moving for a little while. I haven't paused the game. I don't know what the hell's happening here. Okay, the tutorial I just read did not mention anything about uh, anything special you have to do after you kill the eagle. It did mention why is, you know, why is an American soldier killing a bald eagle like a symbol of America? 
Doesn't make a lot of sense, but anyway. Uh, okay, I'm now watching a Let's Play of somebody else beat this thing. Oh my god, that's all you had to do. You just have to walk off the screen. Wow, and you have to walk at the very bottom. All right, whoa, dude. Get over here, nobody shoots at me. All right, well, it wouldn't be a terrible video game if the first level wasn't, like, weird and obscure and difficult to figure out. Oh, you dick. Now there's a guy without a shirt on. I miss the naked guys. Oh, man, these guys are crazy. Oh, they're gonna kill me, man. Hold on. Oh, nice try. Boom. Die, punk. I do like that you can get bullets in this game. Die. Oh. Jeez, oh my god, they're gonna beat me up, man. Oh, Jesus. Die. Oh god, they're firing like homing missiles. Jeez. Go down. Go down. How are these people staying alive? Taking multiple bullets and body blows. Okay, we gotta kill the guy with the gun. He's the high priority, and we're dead. So first of all, I wonder how many levels there are, and second of all, I wonder if we get any continues or anything. Jesus, we're going down again. Maybe I should just continually... Like, there's gotta be a good move here, like drop kicks or something, I don't know. Man, I almost lost two lives there. You, you, oh my god, three bullet guys. The, the game can't even draw all the, uh, the bullets and the guys. Like, look, notice how the guys are, like, semi-disappearing. Die! This is for America, yo! Freedom! Freedom isn't free! Alright, oh, more bullets, thank god. Okay, let's kill these guys. Oh, I thought- <laughs> I'm losing track of, like, where I even am. Also, what an interesting level, just a totally flat playing field. There's like, no platforms, no interesting terrain, like absolutely nothing. Just like a totally flat ground, okay, there we go. I wonder if the, the playtesters could actually beat this game, because it feels- Oh my god, there's a guy in a pony! Oh no, it's a guy in a camel. Spitting stuff at- spitting fireballs at me. Go down, go down, go down! Gah! He got me! Camel dude got me! <laughs> Game over, do we get to continue? Alright, I guess let's take one more stab. One more- one more bite at the apple here. Why not? Now that I know how to play, sort of. Let's beat this guy up. Uh, don't you just love beating guys up on the edge of the screen? They fall off screen so you can't even hit them. Like, look, this first level has, like, actually platforms and stuff to play on. To be totally honest, the first level of this game makes the game seem like it's okay. Like, I've definitely played worse NES games. Um, but the, the second level just sucks. It's just boring. It's just, like, one big open flat terrain. Can't do anything to stop the guys from beating you up, and yeah, I don't know. Let's go, buddy. I hope somebody who's really good at this game is watching this video, and they can like comment on how bad I am. They're like, "Yo, you suck at Operation Secret Storm, man. You gotta learn like the combo moves. You gotta spend more time playing this. This game's really good once you get used to it." I don't think there is anyone in the world who enjoys or is good at this game, but maybe there is. I don't know. Maybe you grew up with this game. Again, anyone watching, did any of you own this? Did you have a friend who owned this? I'd be so curious. Um, I don't think I owned, like, any unlicensed NES games. I'm just thinking about, like, because unlicensed NES games were not gray cartridges. They were, like, you know, multicolored or something, or sometimes even transparent. I remember other kids having cartridges like that. Like when I was a kid, I had a few friends whose like dads would go to Hong Kong for business and they would always get like a Nintendo cartridge that had like 50 games on it, like totally a bootleg thing. But I was always like, it blew my mind as a kid. I was like, whoa, how's that even possible? How did they put 50 games on one cartridge? Seems impossible. And then I was like, why does Nintendo do this? Like, do they know about this technology? 
Didn't occur to me that the games were illegal and unlicensed. Um, so it's like, yes, Nintendo knew about it. They didn't want to put 50 games on one cartridge because, you know, they don't want people, you know, paying 50 bucks and getting 50 games. It's like, destroys their profit margin. Destroys Konami, destroys everyone. Everyone who, who makes games, Capcom, nobody wanted to do that. Even though they could. Um, but yeah, I remember kids coming back, their dads would go to Hong Kong, they come home with like crazy stuff. Crazy video game stuff I'd, I'd like never seen or heard be of before. First level is actually like fairly easy. Um, but yeah, it's like seeing a cartridge that was not the typical sort of gray cart Nintendo cartridge. Um, that was, that, that, that didn't occur in my house. I didn't have any of those. My parents... My mom was a dental office manager. My dad worked in an office. Nobody was going to Hong Kong in my family. <laughs> First time I ever was on a plane was in undergrad, and I flew to St. John's, Newfoundland. If you know, if you guys know your Canadian geography, it's a very small province on the very eastern edge of North America. Um, and fun fact: the first time I ever left Canada was also an undergrad. I went with uh, a friend and his family uh, to their timeshare in Florida. And so Florida was my first time ever being out of the country. We went to Disneyland. And uh, one thing I do remember about that trip, even to this day, is we, we bought Disneyland tickets like ahead of time, like I guess the day before. So we went to some like concierge somewhere and we had to enter our name to buy the ticket. And the concierge was like, how do you spell your name? Um... And my last name has uh, a Z in it, or a Z for you Americans. So I'm spelling my last name, and I'm like, O Z. And they're like, no, 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 spell it. And I'm like, O. They're like, yep. And I'm like, Z. They're like, no, 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 the, the letter. And I'm like, what are you asking me to say? I was like, what, what don't you understand? The letter Z, sir. Um, and then my friend leaned over and whispered in my ear, he's like, it's Z here. And I was like, whoa, do Americans not know what Z is? Like, I, I know what Z is. You know, as a Canadian, we, we tend to say Z instead of Z. But I, I know what the other one is. Um, and I think another thing I encountered on that trip is at one point, uh, I asked, like, a waiter or something. I'm like, uh, where's the washroom? And they were like, what? I'm like, the washroom? And they are like, what? I was like, the place where the toilet is? And they were like, oh, do you mean the restroom, sir? And I was like, restroom, washroom, bathroom. It's all the same, isn't it? Uh, and they just like never heard of it. I don't know. Doesn't you know for any any Americans uh, who are listening here? Um, do you guys know what these things? Have you heard of Zed before? Do you know what a washroom, bathroom, restroom is? Um, I guess it would be the equivalent of like if somebody like walked up to me in Canada and was like, "Where's the loo?" or like, "Where's the lift?" You know, the loo is British slang for the bathroom. And the lift is British slang for an elevator. Again, I know that, even though I would never say it. Um, oh, wait, press A and start to continue. Um, oh, okay, we got one more shot here. Let's. I do want to try and pass this level, so we'll do one more shot here. Plus, I'm in the middle of ranting about uh, cultural differences between America and Canada, so... <laughs> But yeah, anyway, it's just, I'm just curious, like, do, if you're American, maybe you can comment below and just, like, do you know what these other words mean? Have you heard of them? Is it just, like, totally foreign? I find it so fascinating if people, like, just would have no idea what it is. Um, because, again, like, I don't, I don't know how I know what a loo or a lift is, I guess from movies and stuff. But I guess it's just sort of a thing of, like, as a Canadian, you grew up watching some Canadian content, of which there's usually not very much, but most of the media that we watch in Canada is American. So, yes, maybe we say bathrooms or washrooms to each other, but then we also hear restroom a lot in TV shows, so we, we're not confused by American vernacular. Or we hear Americans say Z a lot in TV shows and movies, even though we say Z. But as Americans... You're probably not spending your time watching like Canadian movies, like or, or like you're not watching the Trailer Park Boys and Kenny versus Spenny. So it's like, where would you learn these Canadian things? But uh, I mean, in in England they also say Zed, and in New Zealand, so I don't know. You guys watch a lot of British New Zealand TV, maybe? Maybe that's a thing here. I don't know. But uh, yeah, anyway, so first time leaving the country. I think that's how we got on this long rant. 
Florida. It was a fun trip, actually. Um, it was a really sweet trip to be able to go on in undergrad. Just like a free trip to Florida, essentially. Like, I had to pay for my food and stuff, but it's like... My friend was driving down there with his family, so I got a free ride. We just we road tripped down in their van. It was like him and me, their his parents, and then his sister, and his sister also brought a friend. So like he was allowed to bring a friend, his sister brought a friend. So there was like four of us, me, my friend, his sister, and her friend, and we like went to Disneyland together, and the four of us like, you know, just sort of hung out, and his parents went and did other things. So it was like, you know, four relatively like, you know, young friends hanging out. It was, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun for an undergrad trip, I thought. Um, I mean, it's certainly no, like, you know, unsupervised spring break kind of thing, but I never did that in undergrad. I kind of wish I had, actually. I watched a lot of, like, uh, Floor Bama Shore and, like, Jersey Shore, and I'm like, man, we never did, like, stuff that like, was that crazy in undergrad, I guess. Um, oh, we just died. We might have enough bullets to kill this camel. Oh, God. Kill him, kill him. Kill him, kill him. Kill him. Let him have it. Oh, God. Punch him. Punch him. Oh, God, he's gonna kill me. Look how high he jumps, too. Is there any strategy to killing this guy? Uh, we're about to die. We're literally about to die. No, oh, I can't even land a punch on him. Oh, you son of a bitch. All right, well... Screw this game. This game sucks anyway. <laughs> oh man, Operation Secret Storm. What a piece of junk. There wasn't even any like uh, pattern to that boss or like, I mean, I guess there was a pattern, but it's like, this game just feels like a giant mess. Like it's just, it's sloppy. It's slippery. The fighting is unsatisfying, imprecise. It's just, it's just a big, big mess. You know, I've played harder NES games, actually. Harder video games in my time, but I feel like they're better designed than this. I don't know. I mean, I went into this knowing it was a bad game. I'm not surprised. It's an unlicensed piece of junk. It was pro-gamed by John Valish, so shame on you, sir, whoever you are. Um, and there you go. Anyway, guys, that's, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed my random rambles. Hope you enjoyed a look at this piece of junk. I uh, hope you guys are having a good weekend, and uh, hey, you know, whether we're playing a good or a bad game, I think we can always have some fun. So I hope you guys did enjoy yourselves. If you did, don't forget to like the video and all that crap, and I will see you in the next one. Until next time, my friends, do take care of yourselves, and peace.